It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, and the path is not always pretty. There was a time where rock and metal were known for every vice imaginable at arm's reach. Backstage was a party, and the rock and roll lifestyle was a sign of the devil. Times have changed, and I think a big part of that is because many musicians were able to get healthy and achieve sobriety. There are many unfortunate stories in rock and metal of musicians not being able to overcome their demons. I wanted to point out a few examples of when people were able to prove that it's possible one way or another to get clean. This is not a top 10, no rank. Just a list. I'm not ranking any of these as whose struggles were worse. Also, I'm aware that there are many more than 10. Duh. If you have any suggestions on musicians, not just rock and metal, that were able to get sober, leave a comment and let everyone know. You know how these videos work, let's get to it. Starting off with a big name who had one of the biggest turnarounds from rock bottom to living life. Cooper has talked many times on just how far he had gone with making drug mixtures with his drinking, and it was his personal faith along with the help of his wife that helped him become one of the shining examples of sobriety. The shock rocker has been sober since the mid-1980s, and that has not wavered. Cooper was off the rails at one point, even to his own admission, talking about how he would love performing, then hate it, then love making music, then hate recording, then to him relying on drinking as medication. According to Cooper, he said, I woke up one morning and I threw up blood and that's how I kind of knew it was over. My wife grabbed my ear and said, hey, the party's over. At his wife's advice, Cooper checked into the hospital seeking rehab. Alice Cooper said he, after he left rehab, he never had a craving to drink again. He relied on religious and spiritual beliefs along with his family to keep the ship steady. This face? It's a sober one, and other musicians in heavy music can now have come to him seeking help over the years now also. Cooper keeps good company with his guitarist Nita Strauss. The first solo female guitarist with a number one Billboard rock song has been sober since 2015, and according to her, life has only been better since, and not in the way she thought. For many people, the fear of change is what keeps them giving up habits or knowing how to break them, and Nita also felt that. This is a case of it working. In 2015, Nita was afraid of how her life would change as drinking was a big part of everything she did. Nita told Blabbermouth, I was terrified that my life was going to change, that without alcohol, I wouldn't be me anymore, that I would lose my circle of friends and my onstage charisma and become someone else. All those things happened, but not in the way I thought they would. Years later, and not only is Nita on top of her game, but she also runs a fitness program called Body Shred while touring and performing with Alice Cooper and doing her own solo shows. According to Nita, she wouldn't trade what she has now for her old life any day. Continuing with a man who made a fashion statement with a sock. Anthony Kiedis discussed his struggles in his autobiography, Scar Tissue, and on VH1's Behind the Music, when even at a young age and all the way through his fame, when you are born into a terrible situation with endless abuse and influences, it's all the more difficult to break the habits. After many years, he was able to become sober. He does not pull punches and describes everything he went through and all he lost over the years. It took a long time and several attempts at getting help, but it was after going through Narcotics Anonymous in 2000 that he was finally able to get healthy and stay that way. In 2016, after a hospital visit that people thought might have been a relapse, it was not, Anthony said, being sober for me is a pleasure. I get a lot of joy out of it. It works for me. I get to surf, I get to hang out with my son, I get to play music, I get to be okay. Over 20 years since Narcotics Anonymous, and he's still doing okay. Metal was blessed with the ferocity of Lamb of God, and that band has been a permanent fixture of metal while confusing elderly church ladies about their type of music for decades. Randy also had his serious struggles while describing himself as a full-blown alcoholic for years. While on tour in Australia, it was that realization that something was truly wrong and he needed to change or else he feared death. Keep in mind that this was during the time Lamb of God was touring with Metallica, and Lamb of God was in a great place as a band. Randy's acknowledgement that while on the outside everything was great, but on the inside that there was a massive void, that was what pushed him hard to stop drinking. It was James Hetfield who had his own sobriety issues over the years that helped Randy kick the habit at the time. He said, a huge factor in my willingness and ability to get sober while on tour was the fact that I had James and some of his crew who were also sober to talk to. I did not have to do it alone. It's been many years since, and Randy's creativity and force have surged since. When you hear the name Slash, it's hard not to think of him shredding for minutes on end. Whether Guns N' Roses or his own solo work, Slash earned that title of legend. And it's another time we should be thankful as the lifestyle of GNR, along with 80s rock, almost took away one of the best guitars the world has ever known. According to Slash, it's sobriety that helped him become a better musician. Slash has talked about how after he left Guns N' Roses in the 90s, then all the way up through Velvet Revolver, that he was directionless and heading towards self-destruction. 
production. He described it as the classic rock and roll lifestyle, but the bad side. He said this usage was textbook and he struggled up and down through the years until 2005, until he was finally able to break through. After spending a month in rehab, he came out of it with focus, stating, I really embraced it and I came out of it a really happy and all that energy I was putting towards self-destruction, I just put towards music. Four solo albums and him returning to GNR eventually came because of that. Some artists have a rougher time in the industry than others, and some artists have rougher lives in general. Jonathan Davis has had his share of life adversities, which included hard drug use for years. It wasn't until after Korn truly got into the major spotlight after Follow the Leader that he knew something had to change and he could not keep functioning the way he was. How did he do it? According to Davis, he got in his bunk on the band's trailer and slept for roughly five days. Nothing but as much rest as possible. After that, he got up and performed at a live show. That was how Jonathan Davis said he kicked the habit. The album Issues was a big reflection of how he overcame everything, telling Kerrang, I did a cold turkey, no rehab, no nothing. I didn't know what was going on. I was going insane. Now I look back, I realize I was detoxing, but at the time I thought I was really going mad. That whole record is about that. That sounds like a terrifying process to wake up at random periods and going through the detox and withdrawal, but he came out through the other end and is still pushing through today. Hashtag sobriety rocks. That was the hashtag that Nikki Six posted last year to mark 240 months or 20 years of sobriety. After admitting to years of hard drug use and being announced clinically dead after one night overdoing it in 1987, Six's story should be a cautionary one for many reasons. Many people think it's astonishing that Nikki Six was able able to see the light and stay clean for now over two decades. Nikki Six and Motley Crue are one of the well-known behind the music stories where even their own label executives wanted to give up on the entire band due to chaotic behavior. There were several attempts to break the habits, but at the turn of the century, Nikki Six did it. I would be remiss if I did not share Nikki Six's commemoration post. Some people will try and kick you in the nuts, steal your money, stab you in the back, let you down, sabotage your life, not believe in you, and gossip that you'll never make a day without using. And do you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna stay sober one day at a time. You are the miracle, the one that breaks the addiction chain, the one who is a living amens, the one who has altered your family history. Wholesomeness from Nikki Six. There's something you didn't expect. A wild man with a guitar and an everyday life, Zach Wilde has done it all from shredding with Ozzy to leading Black Label Society. As iconic as Zach is with a guitar, at one point he was also well known for holding a bottle. It was a health scare in 2009 that made him reevaluate his lifestyle, especially with what his doctor told him about how his excessive use was going to cost him sooner than later. When Zach Wilde started getting blood clots at age 42, his physician was very clear about what was going on. Zach said he, the doctor, went over my blood count and my liver account and said that if I continued the way that I was going, I would have needed a liver transplant by age 45, and he said my pancreas wasn't that far behind. What more did I need to be told? What's surprising is that Zach Wilde quit cold turkey. He didn't try to fill the void with anything else either. Wilde also said that what worked for him isn't always going to work for others, and he's also one that won't chastise others for their choices. Regardless, he's been healthy since. Long live Judas Priest. I meant that from my heart, and it's amazing that the band is still moving strong for 50 years. With that many impressive and life-threatening events that have happened to Judas Priest members over the years as well, it's great that Rob Halford has been able to take care of himself after rehabilitation in the mid 80s and staying sober for over three decades. That's impressive. And his motto is the tried and true one day at a time. His quote during an interview, it's very much a day at a time. You're given all the tools and resources from your rehab experience. I use them every day. A lot of it is just like mental notes, talking things through. Sometimes I speak them out. A lot of it is internal. So that's really vital on a day to day level for sobriety. Halford has also talked many times about his unique situation and how he still feels that occasional pullback, but this this drive is to never want to feel that bad or sick ever again. But he also feels supported by his partner, band, and personal beliefs that he can stay sober. In his own words, it's a miracle that he's made it so far without slipping. What have I become is not just a memorable line from Nine Inch Nails Hurt, but one of the many expressions from Trent Reznor and his experiences through the 90s. Trent made his struggle public for years, and it was the realization of what he'd be missing out on if he didn't get sober that eventually led him to cleaning up. After several attempts at rehab and detoxing, Resner has now been sober for over 20 years.
The biggest influence on getting clean was David Bowie. While Reznor was working and touring with him, Bowie having his own demons years prior and cleaning up showed Reznor the life he would be missing if he himself did not get better. When asked about becoming sober, Reznor said, it was an incredibly unpleasant experience, hardest thing I've ever done, but many benefits come from it aside from not being dead. I sorted through a lot of stuff that I was carrying around. I'm very grateful that I had to go through that. An entire video could be done on Reznor's tumultuous life through music, but think about how much we wouldn't have gotten if Trent Reznor had not gotten sober. Many more albums and tours, movie soundtracks, side projects. I'm glad Ziggy Sardust showed him the way. I also want to leave this information for you or anyone else that is struggling. The info in the video description is a great starting point for what to do for specific addictions. Do not think that you are so far gone that you cannot get any better or that no one is worth helping. You can get better and people want to help you. And that was a look at 10 rock and metal musicians that became sober. Know of another musician out there that was able to get clean? There are many good examples and stories out there. Leave a comment, let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Chris Doman and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. $2 a month goes a long way to help the channel. Please click the link in the video description for more information. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified on upcoming videos and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Please remember the website links in this video description if you or someone else you know needs help. Again, it's possible to get better. Don't think you are too far gone for help.